Hello students, in this video we'll see how to use Taylor series to solve a differential equation. Let's solve the differential equation y prime equals y with the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 1. And so here, y is my dependent variable, and the prime represents derivative with respect, to, with respect to x. So here, y prime represents dy dx. And so what we can do is we actually know, just by inspection, that if I want to find a function whose its own derivative and whose zero, when you plug in 0, you get 1, we know the answer is y of x should just be e to the x, because e to the x is its own derivative, and when you plug in 0 to e to the x, you get 1. So we know that this function will be a solution, but let's see how we can actually analytically prove that using Taylor's series. So what we'll do here is we'll write y of x is y of 0 plus y prime of 0 times x plus y double prime of 0 over 2 factorial x squared plus y triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial x cubed, and so on and so on and so on. And for notational simplicity, what I'll do is I'll, instead of writing y prime of 0, y double prime of 0, I'll call these coefficients, I'll call this term over here a1, a2, a3, and a4. And of course, note y of 0 is 1, I'll call that a0. So we have an a0, an a1x, an a2x squared, an a3x cubed, and so on and so on and so on. And so we can note here that since a of 0 is y of 0, we can note that a of 0 is y of 0, and that is equal to 1. So we know that y prime is equal to y, so let's do the derivative of this Taylor series. That's one of the advantages of Taylor series is that it's very easy to differentiate. So here in this formula we have y prime, will be the derivative of a0 is just going to be 0. The derivative of a1x will be an a1. Then I'll have a2, a2x. Then a3, a3x squared. Then a4, a4x cubed. Then a5, a5x to the fourth. And so on and so on. So let's write down the general term in each of these series. The general term in this series over here will be a n x to the n. And if I want to get to the nth term over here, it came from the derivative of the n plus first term. So what we'll have over here is we'll have an a n plus 1. And then that'll be times n plus 1, and that'll be times x to the n. Because the term over here, a n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, when you differentiate this term, you'll get down over here. So all the terms are shifting over to the left by one unit in our expansion. And so now, since y has to equal y prime, we can equate these coefficients. So over here, we have the constant term is a0. Over here, the constant term is a1. So the constant terms tell me that a0 is equal to a1. Now I can look at the coefficient of x. I have a1x. I have 2 times a2x. So that tells me that a1 is 2a2. I have a2 has to be equal to 3a3, so a2 is 3a3. a3 will be 3a4. And finally, a n will be equal to n plus 1, a n plus 1. And so what we can do, and the trick with solving these differential equations, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all of the left hand sides and that will be equal to what we get when we multiply all the right hand sides. So if we multiply all the left hand sides we get a0, a1, a n is equal to a1 and then a 2, a2, a 3, a3, a 4, a4, and then an n plus 1, a n plus 1. Now what will happen over here is the a1 will cancel, the a2 will cancel, 
the A3 will cancel, the AN will cancel, and we'll just be left with A0 is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times n plus 1 times a n plus 1 which tells me that a n plus 1 is 1 over n plus 1 factorial which is the same thing as saying that a n is 1 over n factorial and that tells me therefore that y is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of a n x to the n which is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And this is the Taylor series expansion for e to the x centered at 0. So this is just going to be e to the x. And so we've established that y is equal to e to the x as a solution of this differential equation by writing down the Taylor series for y and plugging the Taylor series for y into the differential equation, equating the coefficients. And the essential ingredient in solving all these problems is that what you'll do is you'll multiply all the left-hand sides of your recursion by all the right-hand sides of your recursion, and you'll get lots of telescopic cancellation in your multiplicative product. Thank you very much.